All right, I think we can get started and, and people can trickle in. Um, thank you all for, for joining us today. Um, I'm Hima Batavia and I'm the director of the Creative Placemaking Lab at Artscape. Um, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Jamil, um, who will, will jump in in the middle of the presentation. And uh, she's a manager at the, at the Creative Placemaking Lab. Um, so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, one of our calls. Uh, we're really really excited and thrilled to be launching a series of artworks with Lakeview Community Partners, um, which is uh, which are leading a, a massive and really exciting project in Mississauga on the waterfront, um, and are in the first phase of construction, and are extremely committed to you know bringing arts and culture to the site and to the development. You know, over the next over the next ten to fifteen years, as the waterfront um, gets developed, and so we are thrilled to to be able to partner with them, and also to bring you know compelling opportunities to artists um, in general, but also you know very specifically at this time, one of our one of our key priorities is to really rapidly bring paid and compelling opportunities um, to artists in in the in the GTA. Um, and before we get started, um, I just want to, you know, do a land acknowledgement. Even though we are gathering here on the virtual in the virtual public space, um, this work is really uh, this work is really possible um, because of the indigenous peoples that have inhabited and cared for the land for thousands and thousands of years. And um, in particular, we want to acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, the Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, and the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, uh, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit, um, and have really been stewards of the land um, historically and also presently. And so we, we thank them for being able to gather here today and to be able to bring art and culture um, to this site. So I'm gonna go through, um, I'm gonna share a little bit about Artscape Atelier, um, just to give some background um, on this new project uh, that launched last year at Artscape. And, and then I'll hand it over to Jamil to talk specifically about the construction hoarding call, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A. Um, feel free to use the chat function. Um, we will we will uh, reference the chat function for any questions if you don't feel feel like speaking. Um, so Artscape Atelier is a is a social enterprise that was launched in 2019 under the broader Artscape umbrella, um, and it it really is asking the question of how artists can be partners in city building. Um, and you know, there's a number of organizations that obviously have been thinking about this. Um, in the city over the years. And our intention is how can we leverage the relationships that we have with urban developers, with city building to actually expand that market for public art and think about changing the culture within urban development to really bring artists in throughout the entire development cycle um, as key stakeholders in the city building and the development process. So really building on the great work that's been done in the city thus far and continuing to push you know, our imagination of how to shape our built environment to tell our stories and to make people feel seen, to make people feel connected and to make people feel like they belong. Um, so again, here's a bit of an agenda. Um, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, Artscape Atelier. We'll go through the call. Um, I'll share some tips for some strong proposals that we've seen in the past and then we'll open it up to Q&A. Um, so this is kind of our boilerplate, but really we're a social enterprise dedicated to creating opportunities for artists to meaningfully participate in city building and shape vibrant and inclusive communities. And we do this through site specific public arts, public realm and creative placemaking interventions. And to just give you kind of a visual of what that looks like, it's, it's thinking about how to integrate art into all parts of our built environment. So how do we reimagine what outdoor seating looks like and bike racks and how we how we use our streets for wayfinding. There's really opportunities for art in every part of the city. You know, we see the, the city as like a canvas um, that can be brought to life by artists. And so, you know, I think people have seen like chalkboard walls in Toronto and around the world 
to, to think about participatory art and bringing the community voice into the built environment. Um, you know, artists are obviously extremely clever in, in looking at the built environment in new ways. Um, and when you're walking down the street and you see something like this, it kind of, it sparks imagination, it sparks joy. There's so many tangible and intangible effects um, of art in our public spaces. And, you know, in this moment right now where we're walking and, you know, the walking has become like our primary activity in quarantine, you know, how we think about public art is, is more important than ever uh, in creating spaces for civic dialogue and messages of hope and love and solidarity. Um, and so it's, you know, we, we were committed to this work before quarantine and, and now that, you know, we're, in, we're going through this pandemic right now and, um, you know, experiencing the, the, the challenges that artists are going through um, in terms of losing work and experiencing increased vulnerabilities and precarity, you know, this, this work becomes even, even more important. And so these are, these are just some more examples of how artists have really shaped um, the public realm and the public space uh, in Toronto and over the years. I'm just going to make sure that everybody is on mute. Just give me one second. Oh, you want us on mute, do you? If that's okay. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Just for the presentation and then we can go off mute. Great. Thank you. Um, and so the, the types of, you know, the when we say like public art and we think about creative placemaking, there's kind of, it's kind of a broad, it's a broad portfolio, you know, sometimes when we think public art, we think sculpture or monument, but you know, it's actually quite expansive. It, it includes murals and immersive experiences and, um, and like I said, th rethinking how we, we animate the built environment and bring art to street furniture and hoarding and signage and you know, you see this around Toronto already, and there's there's an opportunity to expand that. And then, of course, the more um, temporary animation, where um, there's music and theater and um, and participatory and experiential activation. So we're really thinking about that full realm of artworks and um, and creative placemaking. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jamil, and she's gonna talk a little bit about. Um, the site and Lakeview Village, and then um, and then the specifics of the the construction hoarding call. Awesome, thanks, Ema. So hopefully everybody can hear me and see me. Um, if there's ever a you know some sort of an issue, or maybe you've like if I'm not being hear heard for whatever reason, you can just send a message in the chat, and we can try to troubleshoot. Um, before I even jump in, I'll just say like. It's really cool that we're all, you know, adapting to this new kind of format of communications and information sharing. And I think it's it's like a testament to how long we've been in uh, in our social distancing that like everyone sort of just got on here in a really easy way and kind of already knew what to do. So um, thanks for joining and um, you know for kind of rolling with it. So. First, I'll talk a little bit about the site in particular. Um, and Hima already sort of went through a little bit about um, our partner in this, who is Lakeview Community Partners. And perhaps some of you who are on this info session, you know, maybe you live in Mississauga or in the nearby area and you have a little bit of familiarity with the site. But essentially, the uh, development group who is working on this massive project is um, looking to completely redevelop um, a formerly industrial space that was the site of a decommissioned Ontario power generation plant um, that was right on the eastern edge of the Mississauga waterfront. So for many, many years, most of the community didn't have access to the waterfront there. And so this new project, which will bring um, you know, kind of the whole range of like public uses, including residential, employment lands and opportunities, uh, park lands and green space um, will be like a truly transformational project for the area. And not just for the people who are going to be living there um, or working there, but also for the visitors who may come from the other areas of Mississauga, but also from the GTA in general. So it's, it's a quite ambitious and exciting and innovative project. Um, it, the, the site in question that we're talking about is 
it's sort of bounded by Lakeshore Road East, which is the main road that goes east-west along the waterfront. Um, and then Hydra Road, which is a smaller road that goes southbound towards the lakefront. Um, and so in this phase of development, um, our partners at Lakeview are now starting to build up their discovery center, um, which will be a place where the public can come to learn a little bit more about the project. Um, and as part of that construction, there's going to be hoarding, there's going to be um, opportunities for mural art, and you've all seen the um, call that we put out. Today we're going to be speaking specifically to the um, hoarding opportunity um, and the, the digital based opportunity that we have there. So um, this is a little bit of details around. You can see some beautiful photo renderings of what the site is anticipated to be, but it's going to be very multi-purpose. Uh, it'll, it'll include parklands. Uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful waterfront trail that goes through um, and actually will be um, right adjacent to where the hoarding is. So you'll, I'll sort of get into more about the like specific of the hoarding a little bit later, but essentially there's going to be a lot of different uses for this site. It'll be a year round destination for a lot of people to come and um, engage in culture, but also to engage in nature, to visit the water. Um, and so it's, it's sort of the perfect opportunity for Artscape to get involved and sort of say, okay, we're, we're sort of sparking new um, ways of engaging, ways of experiencing, and how can we use art as a way to both invite people in, but also to reflect um, change in this community, um, while also kind of commemorating and celebrating the historic and heritage, uh, historic context of the site and the heritage of the site. So specifically the hoarding call, um, and you would have seen a little bit about this, but it'll essentially run along the main road, Lakeshore Road East, and then extend downwards into onto Hydro Road. And I will, in the, in the next few slides, show you guys a little bit in more detail. The hoarding itself is actually eight feet high and extends 450 feet um, long, which is um, quite expansive and actually gives a really great opportunity for um, a truly spectacular art project here. 400 feet of the hoarding will actually be specifically used for the illustration or the digital um, imagery that uh, ultimately is selected. And the additional 50 feet will include some indigenous poetry and a, an original work that we were, we were gonna commission as well. So there's an opportunity to sort of integrate those two pieces in a really interesting way. Um, so for this call, the selected artist will be responsible for delivering a digital file. Um, and then for our part here at Artscape and in partnership with our Lakeview colleagues, um, the work will end up being printed on vinyl and then applied to the hoarding, which in this case is a material called Greenlock. Um, and so we've sort of thought a little bit about what the site means and what is the opportunity here to use this quite expansive um, stretch of surface to tell a pretty interesting story. And so what we're proposing to yourselves and to artists in general is to design a sort of a, what we're calling a flip book mural. Um, it's almost like a, um, an animation cell style work that uh, can sort of evolve and tell a story along the expanse of the hoarding. Um, we are trying as best as we can to bring in some really important themes into the arts that we commissioned for the site, specifically ones that recognize the importance of uh, the environment and nature, especially because the site is now going to bring people a little bit closer to the waterfront. Um, we want to kind of reflect and bring art that can sort of meditate on the impact of being uh, close to the water and close to nature and and have a community that is a little bit more integrated. Um, but in addition to that, we want to also reflect um, the, the very important role that um, the indigenous communities that have historically provided stewardship for this land um, and figure out ways that we can also celebrate that as part of um, the story that we wanna tell. So 
So there's a broad sort of um, bucket here of themes and motifs that I think should inspire um, many different takes. Um, but we're, we're really excited to see how this particular service and this particular canvas can actually um, tell an interesting story about the site. So here are some sort of like a mood board that we've put together to, to maybe provide a little bit more clarity on what we mean by the flipbook mural. Um, and a lot of these works that we're showing here were done by an Argentinian artist named Tamara Jurovic, um, who utilize, utilizes this sort of storytelling. And I think this kind of shows that we, we want to, because the hoarding will actually run both along the roadways, but also along the waterfront trail, um, there's an opportunity here for people who are driving, walking, biking, um, to all experience this in a different way. And it'll sort of like, um, be experienced maybe in a fleeting way, but also potentially in a more engaged way and in a more inviting way. Asking people who are walking or biking to like come see more, like actually turn down Hydra Road and like continue the story with us. So this is just a little bit of inspiration for you. Of course, we would welcome um, completely different takes and we're sort of open to new um, ideas for how this could be done. So just to help you guys get a better sense of exactly where we're talking about, this map here sort of shows you the um, current phase of planning um, for the Discovery Center that I mentioned. And all of the lines and the numbers here, they reflect some aspect of hoarding or fencing. I have specifically rounded out the part that we're talking about in red. So you can see it there on the top and left hand side, Lakeshore Road would be right there along the north end, going east and west. And then Hydra Road is that road that's just going southbound on the left side of the site. So the hoarding that we're talking about is bounded by the red line and it includes sections one, two, and three. So I will show you a few more renderings that might give you like a, a little glimpse of what that might look like. So hopefully this is clear, but I'll walk you guys through it a little bit. So the top left hand photo, this is imagine you were driving on Lakeshore Road and you're driving west. So this is what you'll sort of see. You'll see that corner, which will sort of be a little board. That's not really part of the canvas that we're talking about, but it'll sort of be a community board, which will let people know what types of activations are going on at the site and what um, what are the upcoming plans for the site? Um, but where you see the little images of the deer galloping, that is the sections that we are talking about. So you'll see a little bit of section three and you can see these numbers align. I'll just go back with the numbers that are highlighted in red on the previous slide. Um, but that section there will be visible to Lakeshore Road. So again, people who are walking by, people who are biking, but also car, tra uh, car traffic will also be seeing that. Um, the image to the right of that, the top right image, is just sort of extending a little bit further um, west. Um, so you can see the Discovery Center is that building in white that will be in development. Um, and then you can sort of see a little bit of Ojibwe text that's sort of on the corner. That's going to be potentially where the poetry is, but may be integrated in different ways. Um, but that's sort of the corner that turns southbound and now becomes Hydro Road. So on the bottom left hand side, you can see now section one, which is on Hydro Road, and it extends quite a far ways down. And then the very last picture is sort of like the ending point of that. So I hope that this is clear. You're sort of moving from count and you're moving sort of like top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. You're going from Lakeshore Road moving west, then you're turning left onto Hydro Road and moving south. And that's where you get to section one. And again, I'll just like sort of go back to this if it's helpful. But again, we can always share this file with you guys um, afterwards. And uh, so 
you can digest on your own time. Um, and later on, we'll speak to a little bit, but of course it, it's always beneficial to potentially go yourself and visit the site um, safely, maybe in a car, <laughs> um, but uh, um, it's, it's a pretty wide expanse of hoarding. So I'll go a little bit into the next steps, the sort of application and selection process. It's quite a quick deadline, which you've probably seen, but we are accepting applications until Wednesday, April 29th, which is next Wednesday. Um, sorry, I'm just getting, I'm just seeing now some um, questions in the chat. Hima, I assume maybe you can answer some of those or, and then I can keep going. Okay. Yep, I can do that. Okay, cool. Um, so the deadline is next Wednesday, April 29th, and you can apply up until about midnight. But uh, the application process is, is, we've tried to make it as straightforward as possible. We're using an online platform called Submittable, which hopefully um, some of you have used before. It is a platform where you can sign up for free, um, and it makes it really easy for you to, you know, respond to all the different components of the application, um, but also to upload any imagery or um, sample works from your portfolio that you think might be helpful. So what we're asking for from applicants is um, essentially just your CV, an artist and concept statement, um, and that's just sort of a 500 word description of yourself, your artistic practice, um, and what a general sense of what you would want to propose for this site. Um, we'll ask you to just break down your budget. Um, it's just helpful for us to like get a sense of, of you know, the costs in, in um, working through your practice and your process. Um, and then we'll also ask you to upload up, up to about 10 images of your past work, um, providing as much information about it as possible so that we, we can get a sense of, um, you know, what you do, what your style is, um, and that'll help us in the selection process. So once you've done that, we will then shortlist um, and then we'll convene a jury of uh, a number of folks that will help to score and review and ultimately select who the successful artist proponent is. Um, and this group of jurors will include both a representative from Artscape um, as well as a representative from Lakeview Community Partners. Um, you know, I think their role is, is in many ways to ensure that uh, the selected artwork fits within their brand and the sentiment that they want to convey um, for the site. But we'll also be bringing on um, a member of the Mississauga community, a local leader or somebody who can um, bring a bit of the local understanding of the local context and history, um, as well as another artist who can, I think, provide the lens of you know, saying what's feasible um, in their experience, you know, what um, what they think might be challenges or, you know, bring that like curatorial lens as well. So the jury will be asked to review all of the submissions that we receive on the basis of three different factors. One is the artistic excellence and merit of the artist's past work. So, you know, in looking through people's portfolios, um, judging on that basis. Uh, but as well, the strength and imagination of the proposed concept. So um, we'll get a, into this a little bit later, but um, you know, what, what is the story that is being proposed and how does that story tie back to specifically the site um, and the sort of motifs and themes that we want to um, highlight. Um, and then lastly, we'll also be judging the applications based on the artist's ability to demonstrate their capacity to deliver work like this um, within the timeline. And um, I'll go through a little bit of the schedule, but uh, as you've probably already seen on the call, it's, it's a quite quick timeline. Um, and so for sure there needs to be that confidence that um, whoever is selected actually has the bandwidth um, and the capacity to deliver within the, the uh, time frame that we need. So lastly, you know, once we select somebody, we'll be inviting them to like engage with us a little bit more to chat a little bit about their proposal and how it can be developed. Um, and I think that that will be a valuable um, dialogue uh, to hopefully get to a point where everybody's happy. Um, and uh, you know, that's, 
that's the part that I'll be really, really excited to participate in as well. So here is the anticipated schedule and most of you probably will have seen this in the call. Um, you know, we, we obviously noted that in this current climate, usually timeline, there's always the possibility that things might change. Um, but overall, this is what we're aiming towards. It's quite ambitious. Essentially, after the deadline, which I mentioned is April 29th, next Wednesday, we are going to look to select um, very quickly and convene that jury um, quite quickly as possible. Um, and then as soon as that happens and we can reach out to the selected artist, um, they will have a span of about 11 days to actually then develop the work fully and, and create the digital file um, in the various like 14 to 21 frames um, that will be able to then be passed on to uh, Greenlock, who is a supplier of the hoarding, and they will do all the printing on vinyl and install it themselves. So the artist is only required to deliver the digital file, um, and they'll have sort of a short period to develop and deliver that work. So before we get into questions, I'll just sort of give a little overview of, of some tips that we would recommend. And um, Hema, feel free to jump in if you, you know, want to add a little bit to this. Um, but, uh, you know, as we mentioned, the, the whole premise of Artscape Atelier is to bring artists into the stories um, and the process of city building and urban development. Um, so it's very important that you speak to your thought process, the artistic pro process. You know, we want to, in many ways, um, educate, you know, the development sector about the value of the artistic lens and way of thinking. Um, so certainly sharing your thought process behind your proposed concept um, is hugely valuable. Um, I also mentioned that, you know, it could help to like, if my, if my images and my description of the site is like not 100% clear, or maybe if you don't actually live in that area, you know, feel free to like go by. Um, if you can drive by, like, it would be a great idea to do it and sort of just see how it might appear from the roadway um, and maybe give you a little bit of inspiration in terms of the surrounding area. Um, but also, you know, in the in the context that we're in, you know, Google Maps probably will be helpful if you can't actually go out there. Um, I spoke a little bit to the themes that we want to highlight. Um, so certainly strong proposals will be ones that make that connection very clear. Um, connecting what they're proposing with not only their personal narrative as an artist, but, um, you know, what we're trying to get across in terms of connections to nature, connections to the heritage of the site, um, the meditative, meditative nature, um, the calming nature of the water um, and the waterfront. So any way you can tie back your proposed work to the site itself um, and the very specific things that the site is going to be doing, um, that will certainly strengthen your proposal. Um, speak a little bit about how you think the work would make people feel. Um, for sure, Lakeview Community Partners and through this development of Lakeview Village, they are trying to do something that is gonna be inspiring to people, you know, create a community that is um, full and engaging and uh, I think in many ways transform the way people live and work in the area. So you know, we would encourage that sort of thinking in the artistic process as well. Like, how do you want the community to feel? How do you want to inspire wonder, joy, reflection, a sense of belonging? Um, it's hugely important because in the context of development, of course, there's the people who have already lived in this area and the people who are already quite familiar and have existing connections. But of course, there's going to be new community members um, and how can we create a narrative about change and belonging that um, um, that can connect with people? Um, providing a visual will also be really helpful. You'll see in the submittable application form that it's not mandatory to actually include um, a drawing or like a rendering of your proposed work. Um, that being said, I think that 
sometimes, you know, our description, certainly just the, the concept description may leave, you know, some of us or maybe members of the jury a little bit like confused as to what exactly you're proposing. So certainly including a photo makes it a lot easier for us to understand where you're coming from. Um, and then lastly, uh, giving us more information about your creative process, especially in relation to uh, the quick timing of delivery, um, will certainly help to, for us to like, visualize how that process will uh, evolve and uh, give us a little bit more confidence in uh, your ability to deliver the work, which is, of, of course, a huge criteria in the selection of the artist. So, the last thing I'm going to leave on here is the link to our submittable. Um, and so it's hopefully straightforward to remember, but of course that you can find this in the call document as well, but we're at creativeplacemakinglab.submittable.com. Um, and I mentioned that it's, it's a quite intuitive platform, but of course you can always reach out if there's any issues in, you know, any aspect of the application process or if there's any sort of barriers or difficulties that you face in using the platform. Um, but for everybody else, you can go on there. It's pretty straightforward. Make sure to submit your application form before um, midnight on April 29th. That, uh, that will be our deadline. And the one thing I'll also say is that, you know, perhaps you've now listened to all the details on this call and maybe it's not right for you, um, or maybe you know other people who um, this particular call or the other two calls that we currently have active um, are just not for you. Um, I will say that we are anticipating, you know, Artscape Atelier is, is a program that we're looking to scale up um, over the next year quite significantly and um, is a main component in how we want to help um, support artist incomes, especially during this time of unprecedented social isolation. Um, so if, you know, if none of these calls are right for you, we still encourage you to sign up to be part of our network, which you can also do on the submittable page. Um, we'll ask you for a little bit more information about yourself and that'll help us to sort of frame future opportunities, but also know how to maybe target opportunities to the right artists. Um, and it'll also enable us to, you know, share information with you as new calls to artists emerge. So please, you know, if you don't sign up for this call, please remember to sign up to be part of our network. Um, and we can continue to have this conversation about um, public art um, and site specific activations through Artscape Atelier. And so maybe now we can open up to questions. Um, Hima and I will sort of tag team on this. Um, I don't know if Hima, there has been already some questions that have come up that you'd like to address. Yeah, the, the chat is buzzing. Um, <laughs> I can see so that. So I can, uh, I can reiterate some of the things that have come up and, and people can keep asking questions on the chat or obviously feel free to mute or use the put your hand up button if you'd like to speak. Um, if, you, if, you, if you press on participants at the, at the bottom of your screen, there's an option to put your hand up. Um, so if you would like to speak um, and you wanna use the hand up function, function please do. Um, and then I'm gonna go through some of the questions that are coming up and that have come up. Um, okay, so we'll start from the beginning. Um, somebody asked if the roadway extends along both Lakeshore and Hydro Road. Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, it's uh, the, the hoarding uh, extends along both and so does the roadway. Um, it, so, someone talked about the tight deadline and as Jamil mentioned, it is, it is a tight deadline for sure. Um, you know, we're working in alignment with, uh, with some of the construction deadlines um, and just want to reiterate that for the application, we're asking for, you know, a concept, um, obviously not any, um, not an extensive amount of, of work um, of actually realizing that concept, but a written concept and then where it's possible to add a visual element, because I think as, as you probably know, as artists and um, folks that don't, I think everyone's an artist, but obviously that don't consider themselves artists or creatives, like 
really benefit from being able to visualize it with a visual. Um, there's a question around submitting past work. And so with, um, with the portfolio, yes, absolutely submit past work. The actual work, the final work um, will, we ask is, is an original piece, um, unless it's a piece that hasn't been showcased and will be extended. But we imagine given the nature of this call and the vision for it to be a flipbook animation that it would be an original work. Um, somebody asked uh, if the artist can be a partnership or collective and the answer is yes, absolutely. We encourage um, collectives or pairs or triads to apply if, if their work is complementary to each other. Um, Angela asked if they're, what, could, what should be included in the budget breakdown um, and I think this is a good question and, you know, we're building our internal knowledge um, to really understand like what's feasible and fair for artists in terms of time of production and artist fee. So I think it'd be great to get a breakdown of like how many hours you think it would take um, to produce this work and what is the difference between your production time and, and your artist fee. Um, Cindy asked if we have to worry about transition art towards the poetry and you know once the final artist is selected we will host a meeting with the poet and with our art director um, to just collaborate and have a conversation about how the different pieces of the hoarding are all going to come together um, because you know we, we definitely want a cohesive um, experience for the hoarding and so you don't have to worry about it at this stage um, but it'll come into play before you start to realize the concept. Um, there were a few questions about uh, what the final format needs to be and if the if you could use drawn renderings or paintings. And so the final format will have to be a digital vector file that can be printed at scale in high definition. Um, so your work would have to be converted into a vector file. Um, let's see what else we got. The budget is $17,000 for this piece of work. Um, Shaley asked if it's possible to apply to multiple call for submissions and the response is absolutely you can apply to as many as you like um, with the with the caveat that you know in general our our, um, our overall commitment and our um, right now is to, to support as many artists as as possible through these artworks and so that may filter into the selection process but you're absolutely like we absolutely encourage applying to as many um, as you feel called to. Um, Terry asked about the panels. Um, and so when we think about the panels, if you think about a flip book, like almost like each page of the flip book is like a different panel. And so our suggested number of panels was um, 17 to 21. So about 20 foot per panel. Um, and that's something that we will discuss and finalize once we have selected the artist, but just to give you a visual of how that story might play out. Um, the, so Cindy asked the proposal on submittable in single PDF form. Um, I'm not entirely clear what the question is. Um, oh, if you, if you, you, you can, you can put it in a single PDF, but there are different there are slots to put in mm -hmm. different parts of the of the application. So yeah. you can put in your con your artistic statement in one PDF. You can put your CV in another PDF, um, and your portfolio in other uploads. If yeah. if for whatever reason you can't do that, n not a big deal. When we look through it, we go through all the materials anyways. Mm -hmm. And and just to add to that, you know, if you have any trouble uploading or anything, you can always email us. Um, I think that there are in some cases like w text boxes that you actually just like type into um, and then in other cases you can actually upload files but the variation in types of files that submittable supports is quite big um, like it's quite a wide range of files so it should work for most people um, but again if you have any trouble you can always reach out to us. Um. So the, we talked a little bit about the size of the panel. So they actually won't be put up as panels. It'll be a single piece. So it'll have to be designed as if it's panels, um, if that makes sense. Uh, 
once the artist selected, will, uh, uh, there won't be, Pam asked if there will be any advertising that will adjust the 400 feet of image area and that this selection of hoarding and this artwork of hoarding is just artwork. There won't be advertising in between it. Um, there was a question, I guess, only indigenous artists can propose indigenous heritage concepts. Um, you know, I, I think that's a good question. And obviously, um, that's for each artist to decide how they integrate that. But, um, you know, I think there, there is an opportunity to consider the, the indigenous history of the area and think about ways to integrate that. So we, we definitely encourage and want artists from all different backgrounds and especially indigenous communities to apply, but we um, this is not a call specifically for any uh, any particular uh, heritage group. Um, Monica asked if there'll be any community input consultation in regards to the, the design, um, not specifically for this um, construction hoarding, um, but we certainly encourage um, all artists to consider the community and again think about um, the demographics and the nature of the site and who um, and who lives in Mississauga and in that region. And, you know, it's a very family friendly area and a lot of people use the Great Lakes Trail for walking and for biking. Um, and, uh, you know, it's very intergenerational and, and folks from a lot of different uh, cultural groups um, live in the area. Um, should the concept designs be in the ratio of eight feet, eight feet by 20? Um, yeah. Uh, you can you can work with that um, like we're not looking for super extensive like concept designs like I don't think you have to worry about specs as much and more think about the narrative and the aesthetic um, but don't worry too much about like the specifics of of the final specs. Um, Franny asked what is experience is required to apply um, you know we're looking for artists across all um, all uh, stages of their career, um, emerging to much more professional, um, as long as they feel co confident that they can deliver um, a high quality uh, digital file within the time frame that has been laid out. Um, the 17K is just for the digital file. The printing costs are separate and um, our part, you know, once we have the digital file, we'll be coordinating the printing. Um, that was a question that Pam asked. Um, Ruth said, we are very excited about this project, um, which is lovely. We're so excited that you're excited. We're really excited too. And, um, you know, we're really grateful for, for Lakeview's participation in um, bringing arts and culture to the site and prioritizing it and also really trying to rapidly get these calls out so we can support artists specifically during this time. So that's all the questions in the chat. Again, if anybody wants to speak, um, if you want to put your hand up, there's there's an opportunity to ask a question. Um, but if or, the, or if we don't see your hand, like if you're putting your hand and like maybe we're just missing it, um, you can also unmute yourself if you want. And um... Hey, uh, hi, it's uh, John here. Can you hear me? We can. Hi. Uh, thank you for all your information. Um, just a, a couple of uh, questions. Um, when you mention uh, 20 by 8 feet, um, okay, actually, I'll ask this question first. Um, when you say this, the work ultimately would have to be original work. Do you mean original work by the artist or the group of artists or whoever is, is selected to do this? Um, as opposed to, uh, say, a painting or a drawing that I've done in the past that suits this theme. Is that eligible to use uh, as, as final work if you were selected to do this? Um. It, it is eligible um, if it, you know, we, we want an original work that kind of speaks to these themes and that also aligns with the vision of a flip book. So if you, if you have work that, that does align with that, then certainly submit it um, and, and then let us know where it has been presented or um, published. Um, sure. our, preference, our preference is original work, but there certainly isn't 
um, there, there could be a good reason to, to republish existing work or, or work that hasn't been sort of broadly shared. Right. Um, okay. I, um, I have done uh, many murals and I just finished one that was uh, 180 feet long uh, that's going in down at Simcoe in front, uh, which would be in, installed now except um, of the, the time. And to create that 180 feet of work uh, took like three or four months to create that original work. Now it was based on, on city buildings downtown to go with the theme of this bank that was, is being built. And so I needed to do specific stuff for that. But for some, I, what I'm trying to wrap my head around is whoever is selected to do this and then they have a 10 day window. You, I mean, I don't know how someone could go out and just create like, like 450 feet is, is just a massive amount of artwork. And if each panel is 20 feet by eight, well, how big, is each of those originals that I'm creating that is then going to be vectorized and blown up. So that would be a math equation. So that's not a big deal to figure out, you know, okay, if it's 20 feet by eight, well, then I need to be working on whatever reference size that scales down to. And if it's vectorized, it can be blown up. But still, to be blown up to 20 feet is a massive amount of space to put in uh, I mean, <laughs> you just, are you starting, do you, do you know what I'm talking about here? Um, it, it's to, in 10 days to create all fresh artwork is like, I don't know how that's possible. Um, yeah, that's, that's really good feedback. Thanks, John. I think we'll, we'll take that away and, um, and see what's possible on our end. Um, I think, you know, probably what it suggests is like um, direct illustration may, may be the medium that, that makes the most sense. Um, but uh, but we'll, we'll certainly take that feedback. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I can see that if, if the artist was creating, you know, big floating abstract shapes that were, you know, kind of like Matisse cut out shapes that could be you know, photoshopped and cut and pasted into these 21 panels, then yeah, you could theoretically in 10 days uh, pull off, you know, something that could be very interesting. Um, John, we might have lost you there. Hello, John? Okay. Um, There's well, a few we'll, other questions we'll in the chat. Yeah, I'll, I'll address some of these. Um, uh, Lady Astro about, asked about um, granting full rights of reproduction and copyright of the artwork. Um, there, there's some shared rights. Um, but it's it's certainly not full rights, um, but but shared rights to the artwork. Um, and to Nafisa's question, applying for visual art and mural art, um, uh, do we need to submit a draft of the work we plan to create step by step, or just the final stage? Um, we need to submit a draft of the work. Uh, I think you don't need to, like it doesn't need to be a detailed draft, um, but uh, again, like really um, outlining the concept from a narrative perspective and where you can offer some aesthetic insight, I think is really useful. Um, and, and potentially you could, you could show like past work of what aesthetic you may use or, or do a quick sketch. Um, or a, a part of the a part of the work that may be included, 
just to offer some some visual element, but but obviously very mindful that this is an application and um, and don't want anyone to have to do a significant amount of work until they are contracted. Hi everyone, Cindy here. Hi Cindy. Hi, I just want to piggyback on John's comment and um, what he mentioned did strike me as a concern, the type timeline. And I think that um, with within the timeline, obviously, if, you know, the world was your oyster and there's infinite time, you obviously want to create the Mona Lisa for this mural, right? But then um, I think it's definitely possible if we choose the right um, visual strategy and aesthetic in order to execute within the 11 day with production time. Um, do you guys have any flexibility on that timeline or is it absolute? Currently it's absolute, you know, okay. um, where there may be some shifting is just obviously with quarantine and social distancing and the pandemic, things are shifting every day. Um, and so if, uh, if the construction timelines shift, um, then it may give us a few extra days and we'll, we'll be the first to let the artists know. Um, so we foresee a potential for it for a few extra days, but like don't want to commit to that. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, I think probably the safest approach would be like, if you think it's possible in 10 days and then what, you know, knowing that a few extra days would obviously be ideal. All right, sounds good. I won't be doing pointillism, that's all. Pardon? I won't be doing pointillism, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Uh, Rakeem, did you want to speak? I saw that you went off mute. Or Ron? Yes, um, I do a lot of uh, lenticular art, uh, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it's, it's read either from left to right or right to left. and. Um, so direction of travel is always a concern, especially um, in outdoor uh, projects of this scale, um, and, and including uh, text, uh, which would be, I guess, the poetry element here. Uh, you know, can read going, say, um, uh, east to west, uh, reads fine. People coming the other way will see a different thing. So I was really intrigued when I saw the, the mention or the term flip book. Um, in this project, which I think is a great idea, but I'm not sure um, how it would work with 20 foot uh, wide panels. And can you speak to the flip book idea a little bit? Sure. Um, Jamil, do you want to go to the slide that kind of showcases like the vision for it? John, uh, Ron, can you see the 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 slide deck that's been shared? Yes. Um, so this is kind of based on a vision um, of an Argentinian artist that's known as Hero um, and, and did this piece of work uh, that kind of showcases like a story that unfolds. And so when you think flip book, think about like a, a moving story. So if you're e either direction that you're going into, you can see like the central character of that story, like shifting in its movement. Um, so you'll see like at the bottom, there's um, this, uh, this construction hoarding uh, that was about 300 feet is like a story of this, um, of this deer that's moving along the, the forest. Um, and then if you see some of the work like up front, you sort of see this story of this individual that is playing with the single chair in many different ways or um, this couple that is embracing in different ways throughout. Um, and so that's what we kind of mean about a flip book mural and thinking about like, what would an, an unfolding animation look like just based on how people are experiencing that length of construction hoarding. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Jamil, do we have any other questions that hasn't been? So there's a few that came up in the chat that I um, have started to respond to. One question about whether there's an age restriction um, and the answer is no. You can, you know, anyone can apply. Um, Someone asked for a little bit of clarity on what an artist CV is and essentially it's sort of like a resume for an artist that uh, helps to demonstrate and outline your 
experience, your skills, your credentials and qualifications, um, you know, listing any sort of exhibitions or showcases or publications that your work has been displayed or featured in. Um, and then a question about how many artists will be chosen to work on this project. Um, and so the response is that one artist or one artist team that has applied together um, will be selected for this particular project, um, not including the Indigenous poetry, that's sort of a separate process. Um, but just to clarify, because there's a number of different uh, calls that we have open right now, and there's another call for mural artists. Um, and that one will actually have, I, I believe, 14 different artists that are selected. But for this particular call, the hoarding that will be, um, that will include a digital file as the deliverable, there will be one artist or one artist team selected for this work. Um, let's see what else. Um, somebody asked if this is going to be, um, the session's going to be uploaded. So we are recording the session and, you know, fingers crossed as long as it actually recorded um, and we didn't have any technical difficulties, um, we will be posting it um, on the Submittable and on the Artscape website for, for folks to access later. And Sorry, uh, may I interrupt? It's John Coburn here again. I, my phone died and I lost you. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. I, I was I wasn't upset. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we always we always figure it's technical difficulties. Right, right. Um, so I'm I'm sorry I have missed the last uh, ten minutes. Um, do I stop talking now, or can you just quickly sum up what your thoughts were, what I was sharing? Um, I think, you know, I think it's a tight deadline. Um, and we're certainly really sensitive to that. Um, you know, the, there, are, there are probably certain mediums that are more suited to the to this work. Um, in this case, um, I think sure. th there's, there's likely other calls that we'll have that, again, we'll have more like a, a longer time frame and be open to, to more mediums. Right. Um, okay. So here, here's and then, the oh, and then the last thing I want to say is, you know, right now the timeline is fixed, um, just because we are aligning with tight construction deadlines, and um, but there is there potentially is maybe space for a few extra days here and there, depending sure. on, you know, construction timelines change a lot. Like we're and and given social distancing and quarantine, there's a little bit even more unpredictability. But we can't commit to extending the deadline. Okay. The timeline right so now. So that, that's, that's clear. Thank you. So um, when you were just, so when you were just saying, uh, referring to if there are other, if this is a uh, gathering of um, a team of say uh, X number of artists, three, four, five, whatever it may be, um, it still has to, to be presented under one artist vision. Is that what you're saying for this one? Yes. So you'd apply as a collective and it would be a cohesive proposal um, that integrated your different styles or practices or the execution of it. Right. But, but does the, uh, for the uh, presentation for the um, submission, um, you would, it would, to keep it simple, you would prefer to just hear from one of the artists or that that paragraph would be a collective, I guess. It'd be a collective. Um, and then I think if you're trying to communicate how you're, or why you're collaborating and how your artistic styles come together or whatever the rationale is for the collaboration. Sure. Um, sure. And I think examples from both of your portfolios could be useful. Right. And, and so lastly, um, do you feel that you are open to if, uh, say I was working uh, with three or four other artists that we felt our style, the, the way we would marry these images together to create that, that ultimate finished piece. Um, I mean, do you feel that if the images do tie in with the theme that someone's painting could be used from the past because it does tie in with water, animals, et cetera? Um, or is that, is that something that 
you're going to go, no, nah, that wasn't created specifically for this. I, I think if it ties in, we'll certainly be open. Um, but I guess where I think we are partial to the vision of the, the hoarding, which is like this story that unfolds. And so yeah. if, if the piece has that element to it, like uh, we'll absolutely consider it fairly. Um, yeah, and if I there think, are elements that do tie the images uh, together as a whole, um, whether there's a motif that's floating through it that ties it together, et cetera, et cetera. I guess my, my, my main thing I was thinking about is it's such an amazing opportunity for a really incredible long extended mural that it would be nice to be able to walk by and actually see some amazing work with a lot of integrity as opposed to something that was knocked out uh, to facilitate a 10 day deadline. That, that's sort of where my head's thinking, you know? Absolutely, and, and we're committed to the integrity of the work and the creative process and, um, and, and certainly gonna take that feedback very seriously. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate your uh, uh, feedback. Thank you. Thanks, John. Um, so conscious of the time, it's 2 p.m. Um, it's 2.04 actually. So we've gone a little bit over. Um, so I think we're going we're gonna to wrap up here. Um, and uh, Jamil, if you want to just go to the last slide to just give everybody that link and that email address one more time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are available for questions. Oh, I'll put the email in the, I'll put the email in the. I'll do it here. Okay. Oh, you oh. got it. Oh no, I sent it to you by accident, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, this is our email address. Um, obviously feel free to reach out over the next week if you have additional questions that come up or you need any sort of specific support on the application. We're, we're here to support you and we wanna set you up for success. Um, so thank you again, everyone for participating and, um, we look forward to, to what you have to create and, and appreciate the time and creative energy that you're putting into this. Absolutely. Thanks everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. See you.